Joining me now for more on this, Beck Shrimpton, Director at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Thanks very much for your time. Look, a lot spoken about direct capabilities and missiles and so on. We'll get to that. But what about what this said about our region? Uh, in particular, the big under assumptions underlining what we should be doing. The big one, the 10-year warning time, if you like, that we have for potential conflicts and trouble in our area is no longer assumed. Is it almost puzzling it was kept in place for so long? I mean, this seems years old now when you think about a 10-year warning. Yeah, you're right. Look, I think it was actually, and it was years ago, that the uh, Defence Strategic Update of, of 2020 did reduce the, uh, the warning time and did say that we no longer have that sort of 10-year um, period that we would expect to, to see things manifesting and give us uh, you know, the strategic indicators to, to put us on alert and, and give us time to, to respond. Um, this document just you know, really brings that home. The sense of urgency, the language in this um, is absolutely appropriate for the times. Things are moving very fast. And uh, I just, uh, watching that, um, the, the Chinese uh, spokes, spokeswoman there talking uh, about people hyping the China threat. I mean, a lot of what you're seeing, um, this particular document is in response to things that China is doing. So it's just mm. an absolutely false narrative narrative to say that um, you know people are using China as, a, as an excuse. China is giving everybody um, reason to be very concerned. There's no transparency. There's no reassurance in their military build-up. And mm. it's huge. It is by far the biggest in the world. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, it's fast. The, the warning time has been has been reducing for for quite a yeah. while, um, and um, but yeah, this really brings it home that we we don't have time. We've got to move now. Yeah, if there were, was any doubt around China's build up, it was years ago when they um, went against what Xi Jinping actually said he'd do. He wouldn't militarise islands in the South China Sea. He said that in the White House, and he did. So from that point, I think everyone said, right, all bets are off. The other interesting line in this, it talks about military threat or coercion against Australia is not necessarily just a bad invasion. So a lot of people that will say, is Australia, um, you know, leaning into this threat of invasion too much? It's very unlikely to actually, you know, it result in an invasion on Australian shores. It's all the other things that could happen that wouldn't be that, but would be a huge disruption. Um, trade routes, whether it be cargo that can get to Australia, and crucially, you know, the, the projection from military bases much closer to Australia, which is now a distinct possibility in our region. Well, that's exactly right. I think what, what this document does that many haven't is really articulate that nexus between security and economics and how, uh, um, you know, we, we've always known that we're a trading nation. We've always known we're a maritime nation. There has always been references to, to keeping those trade routes open. But the, uh, the explicit acknowledgement of coercion and it says economic coercion but it also says other forms of coercion and that is political that is social that is informational um, we are seeing coercion really start to to you know appear within our society and um, you know and that's happening that's happening now so one of the the best things about this document I think is that it's not a pure military response it understands that there are serious threats to our security that are coming up um, almost invisibly mm. through our system through our through our politics through our society and especially um, and what has been very clear for all of us to see is, is that economic lever that ability to you know to, to put um, pull that lever and, and put a lot of Australian industry and a lot of Australian companies in a lot of pain um, and the willingness to yeah. do that uh, to, to achieve strategic aims is, is, is clear. It's 100% clear. So good to see that reference and that connection between what we need to do as a military but to understand that this is a really comprehensive, multifaceted and a complex threat. It's going to require the, the DFAT side. Really, really wonderful to see that we will have an investment in statecraft because that is also how you get after some of this informational um, misinformation, disinformation challenge and the coercion aspects and the, and the manipulation yeah. of the narrative there as well. Yeah, not to mention how important it's going to be. Indo-Pacific region spoken about as the most important geostrategic in the world and that's not just about military strength, that's around building those ties and hoping that the bases, Chinese military bases, are not built. What about our ability to project in the military um, definition back. So 
we've heard all about the nuclear subs and, and the point there. The missile ability, so this is clearly something Australia wants to ramp up. What, what base are we coming from? What, what is our, our current ability in terms of projecting power back via missile strikes? Is, it, is, it, is, is this something that's sort of been allowed to um, uh, wither on the vine somewhat? So it, we're coming from a low base. We, we really are, I think, at the moment, our, our strike um, capability. And, and this is why you've seen some of the changes that you have seen uh, to Army in the role as, as well as the capabilities that are going to it. Um, I think at the moment we've got roughly the ability to, to strike um, around 40 kilometres, and that's not going to do very much um, to protect the Australian land when we're talking about uh, confronting and challenging threats further and further from our shores. That's uh, that's fine uh, for if you're if you're on a, you know, if you if you've already got to a to an expeditionary operation. Um, but it is not going to help us uh, with the challenge that we face now. So we've heard um, the Deputy Prime Minister Miles talk a lot about impactful projection. What this document sort of adds to that is a, is a bit of colour around lethality, precision and strike. And, and it's looking at getting capabilities that give us hundreds of kilometres uh, of range in terms of uh, strike and precision. That's really important because the other key concept of this document is deterrence. And you cannot deter mm. without credible combat forces. Um, and, of course, we need to be able to, uh, to, to strike further afield uh, with greater precision and, uh, and with much greater capability. And we need to be do able to do that as a very joined up and integrated force. Beck Shrimpton, appreciate your time today. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.